We're calming down from some fast solar wind that brought aurora clear down to mid-latitudes, and the sun blows a smoke ring. Those stories are more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. After some pockets of fast solar wind brought us up to active conditions and brought aurora as far south as Michigan over the past couple days, things Earthside are beginning to calm down in space weather. As we take a look at our front side sun, you can see everything looks pretty quiet. We have a bright region in the northern hemisphere that's pretty much fizzled, and outside of that we don't have much of a coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone. Just a few pockets here and there, and that should keep us right around unsettled conditions easily over the next week. However, as we swip to our far-sided sun, now this is stereo A and it's looking at the sun pretty much from the side. If you look at the southern hemisphere, you can see a finger-like coronal hole, then that is going to be rotating Earth's side here in the next couple days, and it could bring us a solar storm eh, probably in about 10 days or more. But right around the 20th, you can't see it in the disk view, but you can see it in the coronagraph view. Look at this massive smoke ring that the sun blew out. Now this is a big solar storm. It's not Earth directed, so don't worry about it, but it's really nice to see these big storms being launched again. And as the sun continues to wake up, we're not only going to see more of these, but they're going to be bigger and faster. And believe it or not, that same smoke ring was seen it from Earth. This is the coronagraph from Earth view, and look at that big solar storm being launched out there. You can see that smoke ring, and it's definitely not Earth directed, but it is yet one more sign that solar cycle is on its way, and pretty soon we'll start seeing some of these be Earth directed. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the new moon phase, with the new moon being on the 24th, and by the 29th, the moon will still be only about 18% illuminated. So night sky watchers, now's a good chance to catch those dim objects in the sky. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are finally beginning to settle down from that fast solar wind that hit us that brought us up to active conditions just a day or so ago. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions, but with up to about a 20% chance of a major storm. Now, mid-latitudes, we're also only expecting unsettled conditions, but we have up to about a 15% chance of active conditions, and this is going to settle down just a little bit, but it's probably not going to settle settle down to normal. We're probably going to stay around unsettled conditions easily over this next week. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything still is in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We have a spotless sun right now, so we have no risk for radio blackouts, and that should make you GPS users on Earth's day side very happy. However, we are managing to hold on to the low end of marginal for radio propagation because the solar flux continues to stay in the low 70s. And this is good news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. Expect these marginal radio conditions to continue easily over this next week. Now also because we are at solar minimum, we are uh, getting a higher cosmic ray influx than we normally would. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly at 800 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes, you are in the marginal range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is beginning to calm down after some pockets of fast solar wind actually brought us up to active conditions just a few days ago and brought aurora down to mid-latitudes. And the show's not over for you uh, aurora photographers at high latitudes. You're probably going to get more aurora easily throughout the rest of this week. But aurora photographers at mid-latitudes, well, the show has likely peaked for you. But don't worry, we do have another finger-like coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone in about about 10 days, so you may not have to wait very long before we get more chance for aurora. Now the other thing is that the sun put out this gorgeous smoke ring-like solar storm, and we haven't seen big solar storms like that launched very often, but it's yet another sign that solar cycle 25 is on its way, and we should start seeing these types of solar storms more frequently, and they'll start being Earth-directed to give us more chances for aurora and a lot more fun. 
Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, things are pretty quiet for you right now. We have a spotless sun. However, the solar flux is staying up in the low 70s, uh, which means marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side. So that's not so bad of news, and it should continue like this easily over the next week. And lastly, you GPS users, well, you know, things are beginning to calm down, and so your GPS reception should look pretty good on Earth's day side. And as long as you stay away from Aurora, and away from those Dawn Dust Terminators, your GPS reception should look pretty good. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thanks for watching.